All right, integrated three students. We're uh, continuing our geometry. Um, by now, you should have worked and gotten through all the constructions. Uh, but now we're going to shift to our main focus of this unit, which is going to be coordinate geometry. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so uh, Delta Math, I have created uh, this section on here, a separate one. That is, uh, we're going to be looking at uh, coordinate geometry. Some of this, I'd say a, a large portion of this will be review. Okay, so, um, you know, it'll feel pretty simple compared to some of the algebra that we've done in this class. But uh, let's go ahead and start. We're just going to look at these sections in your notes. Go ahead and draw. Uh, let's start a new page, unit six. Call it coordinate geometry. So we're going to be doing several going through several topics in coordinate geometry uh, which is mostly going to involve you know coordinate planes uh, x and y axes with that and uh, we're going to start by talking about parallel and perpendicular lines Uh, graphically so what does that what does that look like when we're we're talking about parallel and perpendicular lines graphically well we're gonna start uh, we've got this uh, Delta math we're gonna be graphing parallel lines we're looking here at this one uh, it says graph line that is parallel to the given line uh, I do believe that I math one you would have done something like this uh, but we need to first discuss what does it mean to be parallel. Well, we have our definitions that we had to submit, and uh, on that definition, it said it's two lines that um, never intersect. Well, that's fine to know, but if I go to draw one, it looks like I can get this without really, you know, it's a, when it's green, that means it's good. So, yeah, it's not too difficult to make this happen. These lines are never going to intersect. But what does that mean about? the slopes that's what that's really what the point is that we're starting with here is what do we know about the slopes of these lines that are parallel uh, well we're gonna write that so parallel uh, parallel means lines with equal slope. Uh, based I've already gone through this with some of my in-person students and they seem to uh, agree that this is something that is review okay um, how do we find the slope of a line? That's really kind of the, the only thing we have to really work on here is how do we find the actual slope to this? Well, you probably had all kinds of tricks in eighth grade, ninth grade on how to find this slope. Uh, but something that should come to mind quickly is rise over run. All right. Uh, you had a formula that is useful. Uh, but it's also, you know, a little bit more work to use this y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So when I'm looking at this graph here, I'm going to zoom in on it, and I'm actually going to draw on it. How you should go about doing yours, you're going to be looking for sort of the points. Here I have a point here at uh, this is, uh, 0, 5. And then I see another point here. So I can find my slope by drawing, I'm gonna put some dashed lines here. Yeah, I've got that. Making these dashed lines, it's gonna go down one and over four. So down one, one, two, three, four, over four. So that is plus one, rise. Oh, hold on, no, no, I have that wrong. We're rising negative one, right? Because we're going down negative one, running positive four. So this is negative one over four. So that's how you can find your slope. And we know that these have to have equal slopes for it to be parallel. Uh, so for parallel lines, negative one divided by four. Yep, negative one divided by four. That's all we have to do for these problems. You only have five of them. Should be pretty easy for you to get done. But that's not the new, I don't think that's a new skill for most of y'all. Okay. Let's look at the next one. Here we have parallel and perpendicular. So this one is pretty much the same thing. You want parallel, give the slope. Eh, we're gonna go to a perpendicular one. So 
what does it mean to be perpendicular? Well, uh, before I actually draw the line here, let's, uh, let's write this in our notes. Let's talk about perpendicular. Perpendicular. What do we know about the lines that are perpendicular? Well, they intersect at a 90 degree angle. Well, how do I create slope? Because it has to do with slopes, right? That's what we're noticing here with these. What kind of slope create a perpendicular intersection? That's what we need to know. Well, it's gonna be one that has sort of almost an opposite slope, right? Uh, it has to be completely different. So if this slope on, um, on here, let's go ahead and let's write on this. Okay, if the slope, we start here, go to here, we can see that we have, um, we're rising one, two, three, running one. That's plus three, plus one. So we have a one, oops, hold on, three over one slope. Okay, so we kind of need something that's opposite of that. So what we're actually gonna do to create a perpendicular slope is we are going to change the sign and flip it. Okay, change the sign and flip. And this is, uh, this is called the opposite reciprocal. Hopefully that's not something brand new to you, but uh, we're gonna say slopes are opposite reciprocals. So, in other words, flip and change the sign. Okay, that is perpendicular lines. Let's even put an example in there. So if I have, so we'll say, uh, erase that. If I have, let's say example, slope of one half, same as, negative two. So it'd be two over one, which is two, but then we change the sign. So that's, that's how that works. So on here, we said the slope was negative one third. Original slope three over one. Perpendicular slope is negative one over three. Oh, I forgot to draw the line. So you gotta make sure you draw the line as well for your delta math. Let's try this one. It says this one perpendicular. So my slope is one, two, down two, one, two, three. So down two, right three. So negative two over three. All right. So down one, two, one, two, three. Okay. And then the perpendicular slope would be three over two. Now I'm not going to hit enter this time. So I'm going to go ahead and graph this. And so with these slopes here, you, it doesn't matter where you start the line. You go, you just pick any point you want. You go one, two, three, one, two, following that slope up three, down two. Now I got it this time. There we go. Good. All right. So I feel like uh, all that will be pretty quick, but we wanted to see it graphically. It is coordinate geometry, but now we're going to get into equations. Okay, so next part of your notes. Not a whole lot being written here. That's uh, fine. So we're gonna. I'm gonna duplicate this on here, and uh, in our notes, we're gonna put parallel perpendicular lines from equations. It's the next section, and then you're gonna go ahead and uh, write this example here. Um, hold on, not this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll do this one. Uh, slope of a line perpendicular. Yeah, just write, um, just write slope of a line perpendicular to, and then you'll put this equation here. That's all you need to do. Yeah, I'll just write it like this. Okay. Uh, so we're just trying to find the slope. That's all we want here. Now you'll notice that um, we are we able to find the slope from what we're seeing currently on this problem? And the answer is no. We can't tell just by looking at this what the slope actually is. Okay. So for this first example, 
we need to get it into y equals mx plus b. I mean, I kind of want to even copy this example now that I'm thinking about it. I want to do this. Uh, actually, I don't think that'll work. That's fine. Uh, so we want to get it into that y equals mx plus b form. And this should be absolutely no problem for us. Uh, I, I know that I said we're kind of done with algebra at this point. Well, what I really meant was we're done learning new things about algebra. We're still going to use it in here. And we need to use algebra to get y by itself. This is kind of like the, um, the inverse examples that we were doing. But we need to move the x over. So we get rid of it. We get 3y equals negative 6x. Minus 63. All right, and then we just divide by three. Oh, sorry, to the whole thing. The whole thing's divided by three. We had a few people miss uh, a problem like this that's set up like this negative 6x minus 63 over three. Remember, with fractions, I don't know that we've run into this this year, but we're, we're running into it now. Fractions like this, you can split them apart, and you're going to have to. So it be negative 6x over 3 minus 63 over 3. And then we're going to go ahead and um, simplify each fraction. So this becomes negative 6 over 3 is negative 2 x and then we divide 63 by 3 which is 21 this is a negative by the way so it's 21 and then we have our slope right here however remember we need it to be perpendicular to this line that we, we started with so for it to be perpendicular we have to change this slope to the opposite reciprocal so the opposite reciprocal is one half right so in delta math, I'll be putting one half. So you need to be careful and make sure you read the problem and make sure you know what it wants. So parallel, I don't have to change anything once I get this slope by itself. This slope, by the way, is going to be uh, positive one. So I did. I, you can do the algebra quickly in your head if you you know if you get good at it. There are fast ways of doing it. Uh, this one will be uh, positive two. Okay, so. You, Basically, I'm moving this one over and then dividing by this symbol. And I don't really care about the y-intercept on this. I don't really care about it. Okay. There's that one. All right. This is more of the same. Uh, but it's just general questions about parallel and perpendicular uh, lines. So which equation represents a line which is perpendicular to the x-axis? Well... Perpendicular means it has to go vertically, it has to intersect it at a 90 degree angle. The only one that does that is this one here, vertical line. We did forget to talk about uh, some of the other slope types. We need to do that. Uh, so what is a horizontal slope? Let me actually type this, because it's just gonna be easier. Horizontal lines. have a slope of zero. They're always shown as y equals a constant. Okay, that's how you're going to see those horizontal lines if that pops up. Next, vertical lines have an undefined slope. Okay. They are undefined, and that is shown as x equals constant. Okay, so x equals some value. All right, so we got that. So uh, we're getting near the end of this lesson, which we're, we're really covering a lot of ground quickly here. Um, and I'm going to have to get some other apps involved with this, because Delta Math doesn't, isn't comprehensive to all the geometry we have to go through. So um, we'll make sure that, uh, or I'm just want to go ahead and give you a heads up. The next lesson that we're doing is going to be on uh, Desmos instead of Delta Math. Uh, so just uh, make sure you're, uh, just give you a heads up on that. 
But let's go ahead and talk about, we're gonna work two examples on here. And I would like you to write down this whole example for me, please. What is an, what is an equation of the line that passes through the point negative eight zero and is parallel to the line x minus two y? So go ahead and write that down. All right, so <clears throat> we're trying to create a second equation, like an entirely new equation that is gonna go through this point. It has to be parallel to this. And this is similar to, like we constructed this, we constructed lines parallel through a point. Um, but this is gonna be slightly different from that for sure, because we're just doing this algebraically. But we are going to start by figuring out what is the slope of this new line. So through algebra, we will end up getting y is equal to uh, 1 half x. And then this is going to be uh, plus, no, no, minus 5. Okay. That's just manipulating this, changing this equation into its slope intercept form. Okay. Now, the new equation has to be in this form over here, and I'm gonna write this in green. Here's our new equation. Y equals mx plus b. Okay. So, if we're creating this new equation and we know that it needs to be parallel, how, uh, how, what, what's the one thing we know about that? Well, the slopes have to be the same. So I know that this has to be y equals 1 half x plus do we know our y-intercept well right now we see this negative 5 over here and you might be thinking oh it's negative 5 well that can't be the case because if we put negative 5 here or minus 5 then now we have the lines lines that are exactly the same and remember parallel means they have to uh, never intersect but these lines are going to intersect always so that can't be right the question is now, and this is the skill, how do we find B? Also, we, we haven't even talked about the fact that it has to go through this point. Well, this point is actually what helps us here, okay? This is what we need. Because this is an X and Y value, we're able to use those points and plug them in down here. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna plug in a zero for Y, one half times this negative eight, plus b, and now we have a very solvable equation. We can get b by itself, and we'll get our uh, final uh, answer that'll go inside of this answer box. So zero is equal to, what's half of negative eight? That's negative four plus uh, b. Then I get four, or I get b by itself by adding four. And we get four equals b. So my final equation, so not only does this equation, is it parallel, but it's also going to go through that point negative eight zero because we made it to do so. It's going to go in here. So it's going to be y equals one half x plus four. There we go. So let's try that out. Y, and we're going to keep hitting the whole thing. Y equals one half x plus four okay, make sure that that goes on out here what did i do wrong here did i solve too fast i had that right the parallel line uh, i don't understand what i did oh i put an x on the bottom terrible okay well so i did have it correct let's just let that go on the record the X is out here. Just make sure you type it in correctly. That's, uh, that could happen to anybody, right? Even the teacher. All right, let's do one that's perpendicular. So let's do this one here, perpendicular. And this will be the last example we do and this lesson will be over. So it says, what is an equation of the line that passes through the point negative six, negative seven, and is perpendicular to the line six X plus five Y equals 30. All right, so we start by converting this into uh, it's the normal equation or to the slope intercept form. That's what we want to do. Let me uh, copy this down. So we're going to get this into slope intercept form. Subtract 6x, divide by 5. So that's y equals 
negative 6x. I'll write it out this time just to make sure that there's no, no errors here. Then we divide by 5. Okay, so this is going to be y equals negative 6 fifths x plus 30 divided by 5 is 6. This is our original. Now, we want our new one to have this form, y equals mx plus b. And remember, the important part is that it has to be perpendicular. So for it to be perpendicular, we have to have the opposite reciprocal slope. So our slope should be y equals 5 over 6. Now we still don't know B. If you remember, the same process is going to happen on this one then as, as did the last one. We have to take the X and the Y value and plug them in. So it's going to be, I'm going to plug in a negative 7. I'll write it down here, negative 7 for Y equals 5 sixth X. And then we plug, uh, and the X is actually going to be X is going to be negative, or yeah, negative six. Then we add B. Okay, now we just solve for B. We simplify this right here. Five, six times negative six. If you need your calculator, you can grab that. It will be negative five because the sixes are going to cancel out except the negative stays. Then we add five. And we end up with... Uh, negative 2 equals B. So our final answer should be Y equals 5 6 X minus 2. That should be what goes in there. I'm going to try not to mess it up this time. So Y equals 5 divided by 6. Go up. There it is. X minus 2. Just double check. Confirm. I don't want to mess this up this time. Uh, all right, I did end up getting it correct. The one that we went with worked perfect. All right, so that's going to be it for this lesson. Uh, make sure that you get all that delta math done on there. There might be a few more topics that get added, but I'm not really sure. Um, I'm not really sure that des delta math has what we need. So uh, if there, if I do add something, it might be from a different website. But uh, we'll we'll see what that ends up being. Okay.